Well, hello there, and welcome to the world of Valheim. This is a new game. It's not actually out out. It's out on early access on Steam. Uh, I've been playing it for a little bit. It's pretty popular. I think it's one of the uh, top ten most popular games on Steam and maybe in history. I think it's got like the one of the top ten records for uh, players on Steam. So. A really, really cool game. Really enjoying it. So as you can see, the art style is a little bit uh, um, not really realistic, almost cartoonish, very reminiscent of World of War Warcraft, uh, which makes it actually uh, a little bit better because you don't have to worry about the graphics getting uh, old or dated as the game gets older. Um, so this was actually a video requested that somebody wanted to see what I was doing and how things were going, so I thought I'd just give kind of a little bit of a tour of my progression. So, this is where I started on this island here. So, you, you actually start over here, there's a ring of stones that you're dropped in at, and but this is the island that I was on. And I kind of just worked my way around, came to this little lagoon here, and decided this is where I was going to build my base. So you can see this is a little hut I built. I didn't build the whole thing all at once. I mostly started with this house part here. Very, very simple little shack. Just a typical little house. We got a fireplace here with a little chimney to vent the smoke because smoke will actually hurt you in the game if you get too much smoke in your uh, house. If you breathe in the smoke, it will hurt you. So you kind of have to vent your smoke out and have a fireplace. You got your bed, because you can sleep at night, and if you sleep at night, it just passes the night. You don't have to worry about it. Um, storage chest, because you're going to need a lot of storage. And then over here, I eventually built, this is my work area. I got a workshop. And out here, I used to have um, spots for smelting. Um, but I didn't really use them very much, because the island I'm on does not really have the resources I need to collect metal. But this was a starting area. Um, the, the region, if you look in the upper right corner where the minimap is, it says Meadows. Meadows is the, the super low easy level. It's the basic. Uh, there's nothing really dangerous here as long as you're careful. Um, you do start out with nothing except for your underwear. So you kind of have to pick up stones like that. And then pick up branches like that. And then when you get enough of them, you can craft them into some basic tools like a basic uh, stone axe, a stone ha uh, wood hammer, and then you use those to start chopping down trees to get more wood. And then you can start hunting animals, and you get leather off some of the animals, you get food off of some of them that you cook. Cause, um, you don't really starve to death in this game. If you look in the lower left, there's that red bar that says 92, that's your health. You always have at least 25. That's the base health that you have. If you want your health to get higher than 25, then you eat food. Food gives you a buff for your health. And different types of food will give you different amounts. So you start off picking berries and eating the berries, or picking mushrooms and eating the mushrooms. Or if you can kill some critters like these little lizards over here called necks, they will sometimes drop a tail that you can cook, and that gives you a nice little health bonus. But, uh, yeah, that's basically all you do is just, you know, work on some of those, get uh, some leather scraps and pieces, and start to make yourself some armor, some slightly better weapons. Then you can kill some deer and get better leather, you can make some better armor. And eventually you kill the first boss. And once you kill the first boss, he drops... Um, some equipment that will let you uh, basically mine. You can make a pickaxe so you can mine stone and you can mine um, copper and tin and that lets you move into the Bronze Age which is your next level. So you start off at the Stone Age with leather armor and stone weapons and you can move into the Bronze Age but this island here did not really have the resources because to do the bronze stuff you need a region like this it says Black Forest. You can see it's a little bit darker and it kind of skirts the edges of this island but there really wasn't a lot there. That and the next boss that I needed to kill was not on this island. So I decided okay well there's not a whole lot here for me. I might as well go to someplace else. Maybe go to the next island where the boss is at. I'll build a base at that island and work my way from there. 
So we'll go take a little tour of that. So here's, again, my old base. Pretty simple. Just a little hut, simple shack, a little covered work area, and then a little dock. Now this boat is not the first boat you make. This is the second boat you make. The first boat you make is a raft, which is really, really, really terrible. It does not move very, very quickly. It does not turn very, very quickly. It is very sluggish and difficult to get anywhere. But this one, as you can see, once you get bronze, and you can make bronze nails, then you can make this boat, and this is much quicker, much more maneuverable. It's rather enjoyable to actually drive this around. Now you do have to be careful as you're sailing. A couple things, first of all, in the right hand side, you can see where the picture of the sail is. That means I'm using my sails to power my boat. If I slow down, I can go to the, the slowest level, which has just the oars. So I'm using oars to row, so I can still move, but it's not as fast. And below that, you can see there's that ring with the kind of a shape of a boat in it, and then there's those white curvy lines. That represents wind. And in order to sail, you've got to have the wind coming in from the right direction. If you'll notice, the top part of that ring is black. If the wind is coming from the top part of that ring, you are sailing into the wind, and your sails are going to be completely ineffective. So you have to be watching this, the wind direction. So right now I'm turning and I'm heading into the wind. And you can see my sails no longer are working and my speed slows way down. So when that happens, you just have to resort to your oars. And they, they can still get you there, but they're not quite as fast. So what you can do, if you know anything about sailing, you can do tacking. And tacking is where if you want to go against the wind, you kind of do what I'm doing here, where you go part way, where you got the wind out at one angle from like the front left, and you go a while that way, and then you do a sharp turn, and you get the wind in your front right, and then you go a while that way. It's uh, called tacking. It's a way to sail, even when the wind is kind of going the wrong direction, or you're trying to you're, tr you're trying to sail in the direction the wind is blowing against. So. But luckily, the wind will occasionally change direction, and you'll get it behind you, and then you can really start to cruise. So, this is the first island. And you can see I explored quite a bit of it. This big center area. I didn't get much there because there wasn't a whole lot in there and these areas that are white. That's actually, oh, I was turning. I wasn't paying attention. That's actually mountain terrain. And if you go into the mountains, and well, it's freezing. And you don't have your starter gear able to protect you from the cold. It's not insulated enough. So, can't really go up there. If you go up there, you get uh, hypothermia and frostbite, and you take freezing damage, and that's not fun. So, I just kind of sailed it. Now that when I did this, I had my raft, so it was nowhere near as fast. But I sailed down to that island over there, and as I explored around a little bit, I found a spot to make the, the next base, which we're going to get to very shortly. Now this island, I didn't realize how big it was, um, but I knew it was the island where the next boss was, or at least was close to where the next boss was. So I figured, well, I'll stop here, build a quick little base, explore around, see what's there, and then decide if I want to, you know, make it more permanent. And that's it, it kind of turned into something more permanent. Because it turned out this island was really, really big. And it had a lot of the Black Forest region. The Black Forest region is where you get the bronze materials. And you get the copper and the tin. So you, you mine copper and then you mine tin. And then you smelt them. And then you combine them together to make bronze. And you need the Dark Forest for that. Well, that's all of this stuff. And all of this down here is all of that is black forest stuff so 
lots of it that was there. So I'm like, this is going to be a great place. Well, this is where I decided to build my base. And you can see it's a little bit more complicated than the last one. It's a little bit more to it. Docking, oops. Scrape the side a little bit, came in too fast. Driving the boats is a pain sometimes. They can, they're not super precise to maneuver. You have to figure in things like drift and momentum and stuff like that. And if you're going too fast, well, stuff like that will happen. You also have to watch out for rocks in the water. Um, you can see there's rocks down there. Some of them will stick up higher, and if you're not paying attention, or if you don't see them, they will scrape the bottom of your boat, and will cause damage that way. But, yeah, this is kind of just a, a quick little overview. Um, I, as usual, just like with the first one, I started with just a little basic shack, and over time, built it up as I needed more stuff. This area is a little bit more dangerous. There's a little bit more uh, risk of attacks and things. So I had to make it a little bit more defensive than my first one. Come on. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Trying to get it parked right at the edge. Okay. Because if you miss, if you're a little bit too far away, you miss that jump, you land in the water, well, you end up swimming. But swimming, you're like, oh, well, that's not too bad. And that's mostly true, except you'll notice while I'm running right now, there's that yellow bar down below my feet. That's stamina. Well, swimming takes stamina, too. And if you have to swim too far and you run out of stamina, then you start drowning. So that's not good. All right, so here we go again. This is pretty much similar to what I started with in my uh, first base, you know, just a simple little hut, bed, fireplace with chimney, got some storage, put a little workshop area nearby, got a little bit more stuff on this one, so it's a little bit more advanced. But then again, because I was doing a lot more mining, here is the charcoal kiln. This is where you take wood, throw wood in here, and it burns the wood and turns into charcoal. And then you put the charcoal in here, along with the copper ore or the tin ore and this is your smelter so you put the coal on this side put the uh, ores on this side so do I have any? no I don't have any put the ore on this side and then after a while the copper or tin ingots will come out and then over here is my blacksmith table my forge this is where you take the copper and the tin and you forge it into the bronze and where you make your bronze weapons and armor and those sorts of things. So uh, it's really kind of important. You'll see I got the roof over this. I got roof over my workshop and my house. Um, you'll see this right here. See how this plank is grayish green while the rest is this nice healthy orange. Um, wood takes damage. So lots of things like your floors and your furniture and things. They take rain damage if they don't have a roof over them. Um, walls like this and the big pillars like this, they're more protected so they don't take weather damage. But your regular floor wood um, and your furniture and things, those will actually take damage if they're open to the weather. So you, you always want to have like a roof on things. So like over here, I've got my little defensive parapet here, a little walkway that can climb up. So when the monsters decide they want to attack and they send uh, mobs of enemies at me I can come up here and I can come and I can I did dig a ditch to keep them away um, so I have a little bit of distance so I can just sit up here with my bow and I can just plink away at them and and shoot at them that way I got some beehives so I can get some honey Honey is good food, and later on, when you get more technology, you can turn it into to mead. And then you can make different types of mead for different things. So, um, again, I made this, and there's another one on the other side. The, uh, the problem is, um, when, the, when the monsters attack, sometimes they'll come here toward the gate, and they'll try and attack the gate, which is fine. 
but a lot of times they'll just run down here and they'll go after my boats because they see the boat as an enemy target. They don't really see the walls as an enemy target to attack, but they see the boat. So they'll come down here and they'll actually go swimming out to the boat to attack it. So I tried to put this here thinking that, you know, maybe if I made this deep enough, they wouldn't be able to go swimming outboard, but that yeah, didn't work very well. It does keep them away from my walls, so I have a better angle to shoot from, which is nice. And I can see I've got those big timber stake walls around there. Oh, look, there's a, there's a little dude wanting to wander around. Boom. Bye. Uh, got nice little lights around things. Um, these are the bronze lights. You get these when you um, first start smelting bronze. So a lot of your crafting stuff is uh, locked behind technology. So you start off with your basic wood crafting for your basic huts and things like that. As you unlock new uh, materials, you can unlock new um, pieces of furniture, new decorations, new different types of lights and things like that. Um, this here is stone pavement that once you unlock stone working, you can use stone to make basically a stone floor. That looks kind of cool, I think. So this is my, this is the base that I, I spent a lot of time at this base, building it up. And it worked pretty well, but it got to the point where it was a little bit too small. You can see I did actually make roads. These are actually roads that I made to go out to different places on the map. Um, one road heads out here where this money bank thing is. That's actually a merchant where you can buy stuff. So that's where this road leads. This road goes off into the forest, down this way because that's where I did all my mining for the copper and the tin. So that road actually runs all the way down here through this and in toward the Black Forest way down here. Um, and I did that because it's a whole lot easier to A, not get lost, and B, because you can make these little carts. And these carts give you lots of storage where, you know, you're out wandering the woods, you only have your inventory, and you have a weight limit on what you can carry. But if you got a cart, well then you can add more stuff and you can carry more things. So that's why I made the road to make it dragging the cart a whole lot easier. But again, this base just wasn't good enough. Because once I killed the second boss, um, I realized that I needed to move somewhere else. This base is great, it's got a lot of stuff in it. But I'm going to need a little bit more room for things. That and the next boss is not even anywhere close. So as you go through, you basically advance through the different environments. The first environment you're in is the meadows. The second environment you work in is the black forest. Then from there, you move up to some other environments. We're going to go looking at those. We'll see what it's like at night time. This is actually really cool because they do include like weather effects you can have rainstorms you can have massive wind thunderstorms and the water will behave um, you'll have nice and calm like it is now or you can get some big rolling waves or in the big storms get really 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 crazy with how the waves can go there's even sea monsters in here I, i've been chased by one or two and that gets really exciting <laughs> Trying to not uh, get caught by a sea serpent because it'll just crush your boat and then you drown and then you lose all your stuff in the middle of the ocean and you can't get it back. At least I don't think you can get back. I've never died in the water so I don't know. Because normally when you die, on land at least, from my experience, it drops a gravestone at your death spot. And then if you go back to that gravestone, you can open it up and you can pick up all the stuff that you dropped. So you don't really lose anything. Well, that's assuming, of course, that you can actually get back to your gravestone. And if you've wandered into an area that's not very um, conducive to your level, meaning it's, it's too high for you, so if you go someplace like, oh, I don't know, the plains area, when you've just barely beaten the Black Forest, you will get raffle stomped like crazy. Um, they will just one-shot you, barely even look at you, and boom, you're dead. 
So trying to get back and getting your stuff without getting killed again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and again that's uh, quite an adventure. Trust me, I know I've been through that. It took me like four or five deaths to finally get back my stuff when I wandered into the wrong area and got stomped on by some creatures that I didn't realize were going to be that tough. Because here's the thing, they don't give you indications of how tough creatures are. Like some games that you do, they'll have like level indicators. Like they'll say, this is a level 10 creature and you are a level 5. Or they'll give color codings. Like, you know, it's a green, so it's easy, or it's a red, so it's really, 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 really dangerous and will probably kill you pretty easily. Um, there's none of that in this. You have no idea how tough um, creatures are compared to you until you actually fight them. So there's kind of a kind of a bit of a risk there in, involved in that. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know what kind of attacks they have. Uh, and, and you're constantly having to be careful. The meadows is pretty safe. There's not a whole lot there that's dangerous. But once you leave the meadows and you go to like the black forest, things start to get more dangerous. You've got some goblin creatures that will swarm all over you. You've got these big giant three-story tall trolls that will smack you with a tree trunk and just knock half your health away. You always have to be careful of those. Uh, we're going to be going to the next area, hopefully, if the uh, wind will pick up. But we seem to be heading into the wind, so that's going to take a little while. Uh, caught a little bit here, so let's see if this will help. And this here, remember this is all based on uh, Viking mythology. So part of Viking mythology is that there's like nine realms, and they're all connected by this tree. Um, but according to this story, there was a 10th realm that got uh, disconnected because uh, Odin was not happy with the people there. He fought a war and was angry with them and basically became his dumping ground for all the people and creatures that he didn't like. So that's this world. And the story goes that uh, you died on, you know, Earth or some version of Earth. But you weren't quite good enough to make it into Valhalla for some reason. I'm not quite sure what the deal is. It's, the story isn't quite clear on that. So you end up here, and you have to fight your way through the different bosses in order to prove that you deserve to enter into Valhalla and Paradise. And that's what this tree is. This tree, this tree thing here, that is that tree that connects all the, the, the nine realms or the ten realms. Well, this realm is disconnected. Odin supposedly broke off the branch that connects this realm to the tree and all the others. So that's kind of what we're looking at here is part of that tree. It looks really, really cool. I like it. Oh, oh there's the sea serpent. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so... Alright, you know what? I'm going to end up going the wrong way because I need speed. Because I can't fight this thing. I'm going to try and outrun it. Oh no, this is the problem with sailing the ocean at night. You run into stuff like this. Which way am I going? I need to get to Shallows. Wait, there's Island over there. Let's go there. Shallows, I need to get to Shallows. I don't think it can follow me in shallow water. I think it needs deep water. Because uh, <laughs> I've got my best armor on and my best weapons and all those sorts of gear and things. I don't want to die. <sighs> okay, it's going away. Oh, good. <laughs> that. Scary. It's scary. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to lose all my good stuff because it took so much work to make it. Like I've got iron armor and helmet and things. And this belt gives me lots of extra strength and it cost me like 800 gold pieces. And it took forever to earn that money. Oh, if I had died in the middle of the ocean that would have been bad. Let's see if we can make our way across.
keep an eye out. Let's keep an eye out. No serpents. No serpents. It's only like the second time I think I've run into that guy. What's really would be great is like I've seen people doing this, like if you do the multiplayer, you can have up to like ten people on a server playing together. I don't know how stable it is. I think there may be lag issues and things. Um, but you know, that way you could have like multiple people in the boat, so one person's driving it, and the other people are like standing on the side with their bows and stuff and they can shoot at those serpents. That would be really helpful. But as it is, like, I can, if I, I can disconnect, and it'll keep sailing, because I got the sails up. If I was doing the rowing, and I just disconnected from the oars, then it would basically just stop moving, because I'm not rowing it. So I could do this, and then I can take my bow, and I can maybe shoot. Yeah, okay, so I could fight, but it'd be really, 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 really awkward. I don't know how effective just me and my dinky little bow is going to be. It'd probably be helpful if we had more people. More people shooting out, more damage. You know. Alright, so here we're getting close to the next territory. After the Black Forest, the next one you want to go to is the Swamps. Now, they don't really tell you this. Again, the, they, they leave it to kind of for you to figure out where to go next and some of it is by trial and error by saying okay well let's go someplace else oh look here's a place let's try this and then you you fight something in that place and if you are able to at least fight it somewhat successfully you know that okay this is an area that i can be if you're in a new territory and you fight a creature and it kills you pretty quickly and you don't even do anything to it then you know okay that's bad this that's not where i need to be but after the Black Forest, you come to the Swamp. As you can see, this is a very, very cheerful place. Lots of nice dead trees. And this is not really a place you want to build a base. There's not really any good solid land. Um, and there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of enemies that will constantly be spawning and attacking. You've got zombies here and skeletons. And there's leeches in the water big giant leeches that look more like snakes, but they're leeches. And there's green poisonous blobby things that jump at you and then squirt poison at you and try and kill you that way. Um, but this is also where you get the iron. Because deep in the swamps there's tombs. And you go into the tomb and inside the tomb you'll find these big giant piles of gunk that when you mine the gunk, you get scrap metal. See, there you go, there's the, eel, the leeches. And that's, you take that scrap metal back to your base. Oh, see, there's the poisonous blobs. You take the scrap metal back to your base, and there's one of those back there. You can see kind of where the green glowy flame is. That's one of the tombs. You go in there, and you fight your way through that. And you're hacking away at the piles of junk, you get the scrap metal, take the scrap metal back to your base, and you can smelt that into iron ingots, and then from there you can use that to make, you know, more armor and weapons. And that's kind of the whole point of the game. You know, you start off, you just work your way up level by level. Um, as you defeat each new boss, it opens up a new um, resource. So the first you start off with is stone and wood, and then the, the first boss you kill opens up um, mining copper and tin to make bronze. The next boss gives you a key and you use the key, this thing right here, to enter into those tombs so that you can get the iron. And I haven't beaten the next boss yet so I don't know what happens. I'm still working on that. Let's get some speed going. I got the wind kind of at the starboard side so it should work. So again, you can see there's some like land there you got to watch out for. The waves roll up and down. Sometimes you can miss those, and if you roll over them, your boat will go. And you'll take damage. And you'll feel like an idiot. Because, like, I should have seen that coming. 
So this is a very interesting place to explore. You really don't want to stay too long because you just get constantly attacked. They just swarm after you. And it can get pretty overwhelming. Like you're trying to do something, trying to mine some rock or um, trying to chop down some trees so you can get the wood because you have different types of wood. Um, different trees give different types of wood and the type of wood you use um, lets you do, do different things. Um, so you'll need certain types of wood. So you'll need to chop some of those dead trees down. You'll need to chop some of these fir trees and pine trees. And then you've got other different types of trees that will give you different types of wood. Um, and the, it all depends. Like, what do you need to do? Well, that's going to determine what kind of wood you need and where you're going to need to go to get that wood. You're going to do a lot of chopping trees and a lot of mining rocks and metals and things in this. So uh, it's a lot of resource harvesting. But it's also done at the same time that you're also finding the, the critters and the monsters and stuff because they're always spawning and chasing after you and attacking and wandering around and you run into a patrol of like four or five of them. And that can get kind of dicey when you're like, oh no. I don't have all my weapons with me because I was supposed to just go mining and I'm not wearing all my armor because I wanted to save weight because weight is an issue. Alright, anyway, so as I was moving from my old base and I was exploring around, I found this area and this is where my new, 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 new base is. It's not finished yet, still a work in progress, but definitely a lot more complicated and advanced than my other ones. You can see I've got a, um, an actual official dock looking thing here that I've been working on. Again, not finished. Um, this is just kind of the foundations for it. And what I liked about this area was it does have this nice little lagoon that I could dock my boats in and kind of keep them here. Uh, I wish it had a little bit more of a hill for me to build on, but it doesn't, so I kind of had to make my own little hill. There's a little bit of a rise here, but this is this is my, my new shack. This is my new house. So because I got the stone working, I was using stone, experimenting with stone, so the whole first floor is all stone. Stone floor, stone walls, I've got stone braces here for supporting got nice big stone fireplaces here with um, cooking stations. I've got a uh, cauldron to make potions and, and different things for healing. I've got my workbench here. And then up top, on the second floor, this is like the main living area. It's obviously not decorated. I haven't gotten to that point. It's, it took me long enough to, to make this and build it to... I haven't even figured out how I'm going to decorate it. And there's my big chimney. So again, smoke kills. So you want the smoke to be able to go up and out. And fire matters. Um, you'll notice in the top there, there's an icon that says fire. When you're resting, you need to be resting near fire. So your bed needs to be near fire, otherwise you won't be able to sleep at night. I'm not sure why, but it's part of the rules. You have to have your bed near enough fire that you can get a fire bonus. So this is my big house. Obviously a lot more complicated and a lot more involved than my previous ones. I had to raise the ground up. So that requires the gardening tool. So you can level the ground. You can raise ground. You can make paths. And once you get stone working, you can make paved roads. But it does require things like if I want to raise ground, it takes some stone. So I have to mine stone in order to lift the ground up. If I want to make paved roads, obviously that takes stone. But to just level the ground, that just takes stamina. It just takes effort. See? Like that. Same thing with making the path. This here is my blacksmith shop. So I've got my woodworking, or not my woodworking, my metalworking tools here. And all the stuff you add, like this is the basic workstation. As you add things like the anvils and the grinding wheel and the tools, those upgrade your forge 
to new levels and that lets you do more stuff because you can upgrade your gear to new levels to improve them so here's my storage stuff specifically for the forge so I got my bronze copper and tin wood charcoal iron and other stuff I'm gonna need here's my smelter my charcoal kiln I imagine I'm probably gonna have to extend this later because it does take a while for the, the smelter to actually smelt the stuff into bars so it may be more efficient to have like two of these running which means I'm gonna need like two of these making coal because they use a lot of coal and uh, my, my future plans are basically I'm going to also have an another workshop probably somewhere around here um, I've got you know starting with beehive here I plan on having some farming happening because you can do farming you can grow crops and things you can even tame the boars and, and raise them um, I don't know why you would want to because you can just go out and farm them and, and get them easy so it just it saves you effort that way oh come on <laughs> through the rock yeah, if you kill the seagulls you get feathers and you use the feathers to make arrows um, so I, I plan on building up the docks some more. I'm going to have like a, a boat house here. So I'm going to build a boat house here and put some planks down and stuff, make it look a lot nicer than just this broad dirt. Ultimately, ultimately though, I'm planning on building a stone wall. I haven't quite decided yet, but somewhere around this way. Obviously around the outside of this house. So somewhere along here-ish. Gonna have a big castle wall coming out this way, going and curving around that way. And it's basically just gonna make a big giant horseshoe circling around my base so that way I can have everything inside the castle wall I've got my house I'll have the uh, forge area I'll have a regular workstation for woodworking I'll have a farming area I've got my kitchen here on the first floor and I've got my living area on the second floor and uh, yeah so it's gonna take a while a lot a lot a lot of work especially for that stone wall it takes a lot of stone to make those walls. Let's see if I can eat crafting building. I don't have any stone on me. But it takes like the big pieces like that. You know, that's like six pieces of stone each. That's a lot of stone. If we're gonna take this and run it all the way around, and you're gonna want you know, like several blocks high, you're gonna want towers. You're going to want some walkways and things so you can walk along it. And when the enemies attack, you can run along your wall and shoot at them from your wall. It's going to be really cool, but it's going to take a very, very, very long time. So there you go. That's kind of a tour of the bases, the progression of my bases so far, and kind of the plans for the future. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, maybe we'll see you next time.